We all know that there's more to fresh chilies than just the burn, but when they're on your cutting board, that's exactly what you have to be worried about. Here's how we handle the heat in the test kitchen. The first thing to know is that there are no indicators of a chili's heat. Its capsaicin levels, in other words, the chemistry behind all that heat, is tied mainly to the environment. So the same variety of pepper could have widely varying heat differences. With that being said, it's important to take certain precautions when handling chilies. For some chilies, the capsaicin level can be so high that it can burn or irritate the skin on contact. And not just your hands, but anything you touch, including your mouth, your pet, or perhaps worst of all, your eyes. To avoid secondhand spice, simply wear gloves, or if you don't have any gloves, consider using a zipper lock bag over your hand, or just washing your hands thoroughly and often. The majority of the capsaicin is found in the white pith in the center of the pepper, with lesser amounts of heat in the seeds and flesh. To tame the flame, simply remove the seeds and ribs before using. We like to cut the pepper in half lengthwise, and then scrape out the seeds and ribs using a small spoon. I like to reserve some of my seeds, just in case my dish needs a little extra kick to it at the end. We're often asked, what should I eat or drink if I've eaten something too spicy? Most people would think to reach for a nice cold glass of water or maybe a beer, but the real answer is milk. Milk, along with any other dairy product, including yogurt, inhibits the capsaicin from reaching the pain receptors in the tongue. So, drink up. With these few simple precautions, you can control the varying heat level of your dish, all while avoiding the peril of the almighty pepper.